Hey guys, it's Dakota. Welcome back for another happy homebrew Wednesday. So, last week missed homebrew Wednesday. Just a lot going on. Once again, uh, graduation and you know family coming down and just a lot of stuff going on. So I uh, didn't get to it that week, but a lot to catch up with this week, right? A lot of homebrew stuff going on lately for me. Um, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, Yesterday, well, yeah, last night was our homebrew club meeting, uh, great meeting. Our uh, study of style was uh, Pierre Degard, and uh, a couple of us got to try um, a little bit different, but it's Beer de Mars, uh, another style of beer from Jolly Pumpkin, but this was their Grand Reserve. Um, one of the bartenders there went to the release party down in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and she brought that there, and we were talking with her at the bar, and she opened it up and split it with us. It was awesome beer, awesome beer. Uh, I would like to try their regular beer to Mars, but uh, the Grand Reserve was just absolutely awesome. Uh, the difference with those, they age them a little bit longer, and uh, oak barrels. Um, anyway, just awesome and amazing beer. I, I also even got to get uh, Founders, um, Founders Brewery up here in Kalamazoo. Um, Michigan. One of our local beers had one of their backstage series on tap. Went to that. Um, it was their just recent release, which is called Doom. It is to their uh, Double Trouble IPA, uh, awesome IPA. Then they age it in bourbon barrels. So a bourbon barrel, pretty much big, hopped up IPA. Um, it was different. I enjoyed it. It was definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, but it, it was very nice. The bourbon, uh, I think, accented the hops nice, but hoppiness was obviously died down a little bit. Uh, it, was, it was a great beer. But uh, anyway, that's enough of the beer I've been drinking lately. I just wanted to throw those out there because lately I've been having some pretty phenomenal brews. And uh, I had enjoyed buying on tap last night at the bar, too. It was where we have our home brew club meetings. But, you know, I'm done talking about that. I just I want to express the awesome beers I've been having recently and uh, totally grateful to have those. Um, so, what's new? Um, I did get a couple new things, a couple beer swag items, I guess you would call them. Um, I ended up returning the add-on regulator. Uh, it, for some reason, did not fit onto my existing regulator. <coughs> Different models or something like that. Uh, I thought they would fit, they didn't fit. I got a bottle from the same place, my original one and then the add-on, so it's funny that they didn't fit. But I went ahead and got a CO2 manifold. Um, a lot of you guys use these, I'm sure. Uh, so pretty much what it is, I got CO2 coming in from the CO2 tank, right up in there, uh, put a clamp on it, and then uh, I can have up to three beers on tap from the one regulator. They're all gonna be at the same PSI, which is fine, because uh, kind of jump ahead of myself with the Oak IPA that's on uh, tap right now here. Uh, I force carved it in it. Carved is awesome. But anyway, uh, you can turn on and off the valve. So one keg's on, two keg's on, third keg's off. I'm gonna turn that on or, you know, do it however you want. So um, this is actually cheaper than that add-on regulator. And this is for three kegs. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. So. Right now, I can only have two kegs on tap with my current setup. Uh, I can't fit a third keg in there. Uh, it's only a little mini fridge. Uh, lucky enough, I can fit two kegs in there and my CO2 tank, five pound. But, uh, you know, eventually, right? Uh, looking into the future, three kegs on tap, awesome. Another thing I picked up, which is, gosh, I can never remember the name of these, and or I can never pronounce them right. Um, it's not beer Meyer flask. It starts with a B, it's, you know, guys, Shoot a comment below. Uh, never can remember the name of these, but this is a one liter flask, right? So I can uh, do yeast starters, and this is only a thousand, a thousand milliliter one, so one liter. Uh, you can get two, two liter, three liter, five up to five liters. I'm sure they go bigger than that, but the only ones I've ever seen were five liters. Um, for one liters, uh, this is great for most of the beers that I do. Uh, I do mostly sessionable. Uh, maybe slightly higher than average beers, but uh, this would be great for that. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing yeast starters in this. Um, they didn't have any foam tops. I got one of these uh, just just because. I'm um, probably most likely going to use uh, sanitized uh, tinfoil over the top and stir in it since I don't have a stir plate for now. 
that way it'll allow some of the oxygen to get in because if you put a, uh, a uh, airlock on top of it, it doesn't allow any of the oxygen in what you're trying to actually do when you're uh, up in your cell count. That's the whole point of the e-starter. But uh, looking forward to that. Hopefully improve my beer there. But I do have another beer. So let's see what we got. Not much beer in there, but we do have something on tap. I'm gonna have to set this down. The last time I did this one handed, it didn't turn out too well. What do you guys do to get a little bit of beer out of your uh, picnic table? picnic caps when you guys use them. I got it sitting on a napkin and I'll let it all drain out into the napkin above the keg, but you know, sometimes it's kind of a pain. Oh, what is that? What do we have there? Oh, a couple six pack of zombie dust. Yeah, my brother-in-law brought that down for brew day last weekend. Great beer. But there guys is the Oat IPA. So you guys can see, nice finger of head on there, very clear, nicely carved. I don't know if you guys can see the bubbles streaming up to the bottom, but very nice, clear, very nice looking IPA. Um, Porsche carved this one, so uh, when did it do? Well, it's been in there for a week, I guess now, but I Porsche carved it last Thursday. But, you know, it looks great. What was that? <laughs> but uh, here goes, guys. Nice aroma. That, that's probably one. That might be my favorite IPA I've done so far. Uh, I get a little bit of the oakiness. Uh, slight, it's almost like a slight vanilla. You get the oak. Um, it's about uh, five and a half, six percent beer, uh, or it should have been. And. Uh, you know, the bitterness is just perfect for, for a nice sessionable IPA. It's about 50, 55 IBUs. Um, you know, tastes great. Um, if anybody ever wants another recipe for it, just shoot me a comment, I'll shoot it to you, or I'll put it in the comments below. But nice color, awesome color, nice carbonation, nice smell. Great taste. That's for this time of year, great sessionable beer. And I'm sure, I'll have no problem going through that. But last Saturday, uh, the day before graduation, I had family come over, all that, back home, home, parents' house, and uh, I actually did a brew day. <laughs> uh, my brother-in-law, kind of pretty big into craft beer, uh, he's the one that brought a case down of zombie dust, and uh, I had a toll pack that left, so let me bring that back. Um, but he's pretty big into craft beer. He's always kind of been wondering, you know, pretty curious about me uh, homebrewing and whatnot, so. I did a all grain pumpkin ale. Yes, all grain pumpkin ale. This time of year, May. Yes. Uh, my local bottle shops don't have anything pumpkin. They had like one uh, pumpkin left, which I was very considered. I almost considered buying it the other day. But I have a nice IPA on top. Very nice IPA. I love this IPA. It's getting a two thumbs up for me, for for my homebrew, and uh, so anyway, what we got there? Pumpkin ale. It's uh, not bubbling too much anymore. Uh, used USO5 and nice clean dry uh, dry uh, yeast. I don't use dry yeast that often, but I went ahead and used it for this uh, batch. Um, yeah, everything's sitting well. I am leaving that into primary for. 10 days because I hit my numbers like spot on this time. I was maybe a little, like a point, like a point lower than what I was supposed to be on my efficiency. So I nailed the efficiency on this one, glad. Um, and so I nailed the efficiency, which I wasn't honestly expecting. So um, 
not a bad thing by any means. It's just going to be a higher, alcohol, a higher percent of alcohol beer. Uh, the recipe called for, uh, I did a variation of someone else's uh, <clears throat> recipe on Homebrew Talk. Just tweaked it just slightly, but it sounded like a great recipe to give it a try. Um, anyway, it called for a pound of brown sugar to get into the boil. So I threw that in there. Uh, hopefully I get some nice molasses, brown sugar flavors coming from that. Um, I used two cans of Libby's, the big cans. So it was, I think it's red about, I think it is two pounds of pumpkin puree. It's pumpkin puree that you use for pumpkin pies and whatnot, the unspiced version of it. I put two pounds of that into the mash along with, along with a pound of uh, rice hulls to kind of keep it from getting stuck sparge. Um, everything went, went fine with the mash. Uh, nothing got stuck and the rice hulls worked a lot. Um, a pound of rice hulls. Uh, looks like about five pounds of rice holes. It's the, they're so light, but the bag was so big, I was kind of surprised. Just on a sheer volume of it. But added uh, some cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice. Uh, not too much of that in the end of the oil. Uh, I think it was a tablespoon or a tablespoon of half of everything combined. Uh, I don't want the spices to be overbearing. I don't want it to be nice, but you know, you know what I mean. Nothing too overbearing, but a nice pumpkin ale. If it finishes off where it's supposed to yeast-wise, it's going to be 9.1%. So, uh, yeah, it's, and I'm kegging it too. So, uh, it's going to be a doozy. But uh, I'm planning on having uh, uh, barbecues and, you know, friends over and everything else. That So, they, they'll help me finish that because 9% on tap, that's, I don't know how many of those I'm going to be able to have in a night. But, uh, so that's what's going on brew-wise, guys. Equipment-wise, what's on tap? Um, next brew, honestly, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do for my next brew. Uh, I was thinking possibly Hefeweizen, uh, great beers. I just had S uh, Sierra Nevada's, I uh, can't remember the type of one, their actual name for it, but their Hefeweizen the other day. It was a really great beer. I was surprised it took me so long to try their beer uh, with their Hefeweizen. Um, I love Torpedo and uh, their Pale Ale. And, they're half of ice and severe, severe Nevadas. They had a tongue twisters, I don't know why. It's a great beer, they're half of ice. And, and uh, I think that's what I might try next. Or since I'm having two beers on tap, I might do a big beer. I might do, uh, I don't know, like a really big stout and then uh, end up souring it. So uh, that'll be fun. It's not like someone's knocking, I don't think so. But, uh, so, yeah, that might be fun. I love Tart of Darkness from the brewery. It's a sour uh, stout, so maybe I'll try something along those lines or a sour beer, something to uh, brew, put it up in the closet, let it ferment all the way out, transfer it, put bread mices or, you know, lactobacillus or some, some kind of infecting bacteria in there and let it sit. And, uh, so that's another possibility I might brew next. But uh, watching everybody's videos, uh, you know, had to, been having some free time lately. Uh, had a job interview today, went very well. Crossed my fingers down. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to jinx myself or anything, but uh, I'm supposed to find out next week, so hopefully we'll have a celebration video about that. But uh, um, that's what's going on, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna watch all your guys' videos, and uh, see you next time. Cheers. Hey guys, uh, really quick video. I am actually transferring my Allgrain IPA that I just brewed to secondary. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm gonna dry hop it with an ounce of Cascade. And I'm also, you guys can see it, I'm gonna oak it. Um, what I did, I put a, uh, decided to do it, give it a try. I got a uh, four ounce bag of French oak chips, medium roast. Uh, as you can see, these are kind of small, so I went through and picked the bigger ones out because I don't want them to get stuck in auto siphon or end up going into the keg later. So, you guys can see or not, it's uh, it's the bigger chunks that are in there. I just got them sitting in vodka for about 30 minutes. Uh, I'm not gonna pour the vodka in. I know <clears throat> a lot of people do that to have like an extract, a uh, whatever you put in there. So, like I did the cocoa nibs before, and I poured the Everclear and the cocoa nibs in there. So. It was pretty much like an extract. What I'm doing with these, I'm just sanitizing them with the vodka. So, um, I don't know, I guess it wouldn't hurt to throw the vodka in, but 
I'm just gonna dump it out because I'm just sanitizing the chips with it. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and do put the oat chips and the hops in. I'm not using a hot bag because I'm going to cold crash it for a day or so to let the uh, the proteins and the hop uh, dry hops will drop down too to help make the beer clearer so when I move to the keg. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll come back in a little bit and show you guys when I'm transferring, all right? See ya. All right guys, we're back. We got it all transferred. As you can see, we got a little foam monster going on here um, with all the star sand that was sitting in there. Um, but come down here, we probably have uh, probably four and a half-ish gallons. There's a lot of hop settlement and uh, yeast cake down at the bottom there. I mean, a lot of uh, hops there. But uh, got the dry hops in there, Cascade, and an uh, ounce and a half of uh, French oak chips, medium roast. So we'll see how that turns out. I did pull, pull off a little sample. Just give it a try. It's actually, the sample I did pull off is actually pretty clear. Um, if you guys can see it or not. It's uh, It's got a nice uh, little orange tint to it, but uh, looks like a nice pale ale or, it's got the little orange red tish, like, like I was saying, so IPA territory, but give it a taste here. Definitely can smell the Cascade in there. Nice grainy, uh, malty smell to it too, so it's not too hoppy. A little sweetness from the uh, the malt there to balance it out. Give me a nice IPA when it's done and carved. And like I said, nice bitterness to it, not too overbearing. It's not a double. Um, nice Cascade hops. Uh, I think they played off pretty well, so. So there it is guys and uh, gonna go ahead and let this sit for five to seven days, probably taste it around the fifth day to see if the oak chips are in there enough. I don't want it to be too overbearing with the oak, but be a nice little character to add to it. So uh, that's it guys and uh, I'll get back to my uh, homebrew Wednesday video. Alright, see you next time.